he had no empathy, no feelings, uh, nothing. He wanted to be known as the greatest serial killer that ever, you know, ever lived. They are desires whereas if, where if I didn't give in to them, I would be crushed by them. In this true crime episode, we're going to relive the tale of Richard Ramirez, the man known as the Night Stalker, a figure of pure, unadulterated evil who kept Los Angeles in perpetual fear. In the darkness of the night, he lurked, casting long shadows of terror, a man who personified nightmares. But who was Richard Ramirez before turning into the Night Stalker? Ramirez grew up in El Paso, Texas, in an unstable household that would lay the groundwork for his character. Ramirez was the youngest of five children in a Mexican-American family. His father, a Mexican ex-cop, was known for his anger and often physically abused his kids. One of Ramirez's cousins, Miguel, a decorated Green Beret, would play a significant role in his life. Fresh from the Vietnam War, Miguel would share gruesome photos and stories with a young and gullible Richard. For most, these tales would instill fear, but for Ramirez, they ignited a thirst for blood. Adding to this disturbing mix was Ramirez's growing drug problem. By age 10, he was already trying marijuana, and by his early teens, he was a habitual LSD user. I did start seeing something going wrong with Ricky Ramirez. I think what really messed him up was the acid. He would do a lot of acid. The stealing, you know, I noticed the stealing and then started as a peeping thumb and things like that. This, combined with his interest in Satanism, crafted a lethal cocktail that would fuel his violent rage. Picture this, Los Angeles, the city of angels in the heat of the 80s, a time of big dreams, bright lights, and a city that never slept. But beneath the glamour and prosperity, something sinister was unfolding. In the summer of 84, a wave of home invasions began. Casualties, chosen seemingly at random, were harmed in the dead of night, their homes violated by an unseen menace. The city was gripped by fear, a fear that when night fell, so too would the safety of their homes. Everybody was scared. Everybody in the county of Los Angeles and Southern California was scared to death. Who was behind these invasions? You guessed it. Ramirez. To say his methods were chilling would be an understatement. He would silently creep into homes at night, attacking his prey while they slept. He derived pleasure from the terror he inflicted. One casualty of Ramirez's spree stood out from the others, a young girl named May Leong, who then was nine years old. On April 10, 1984, May was playing with her brother outside their apartment building in San Francisco. Later that day, May's lifeless body was discovered in the basement. The crime scene painted a gruesome picture. She had been sexually violated and then killed, her body discarded like trash. Ten-year-old May Long was found dead in the basement of her apartment building where she lived in the Tenderloin. Despite thorough investigation, the case went cold for years. It wasn't until 2009, with advancements in DNA tracing, that a connection was made. DNA found at the scene of May's murder matched Richard Ramirez's. A DNA sample collected in 1984 at the crime scene, they were able to match it with his DNA, Richard Ramirez. Another of Ramirez's victims was Jenny Vincow, a 79-year-old. On the night of June 28, 1984, Ramirez made his way into Vincow's L.A. apartment through an open window. Vincow was brutally killed in her own bed, a place where she should have been safe. She had been stabbed repeatedly and her throat was slashed so deeply that she was nearly decapitated. The level of violence was extreme, even for a city no stranger to it. Over the following two years, Ramirez would commit at least 13 more murders, multiple sexual violations and dozens of burglaries. His prey ranged in age from 6 to 82, demonstrating a lack of preference that added to public fear. He sometimes forced them to swear their love for Satan, underscoring his disturbing fascination with devil worship. Say Satan. Say I love Satan. <laughs> Say it. Say it. On August 31st, 1985, Richard Ramirez was captured by a group of East LA residents. Recognized from his police sketches, he was beaten by the crowd before being taken into police custody. But the following trial was no less disturbing. 
His trial, one of the most sensational in American history, began in 1988. Throughout the proceedings, Ramirez's behavior was erratic and disturbing. He often showed up in court with a pentagram, a symbol associated with Satanism, drawn on his hand. Finally, on September 20th, 1989, after a trial that lasted more than a year, Richard Ramirez was found guilty of 13 counts of murder, five attempted murders, 11 sexual assaults, and 14 burglaries. He was sent to San Quentin State Prison, where he lived on death row before facing the gas chamber. Richard Ramirez died of natural causes on June 7, 2013, while still on death row.